Hi there, it's Ms. Townsend and welcome to Math with Townsend. I've been talking to my grade 9 academic students about their analytic geometry summative and my other videos are all taking up specific questions, but in this video I wanted to talk about silly mistakes that I'm still seeing and I want to make sure that you stop making them. I think a lot of you have a really good idea about how to do analytic geometry, but you're losing marks because of these silly mistakes. So let's talk about what they are and hopefully you'll learn to stop making them. So the first mistake that I'm seeing kind of regularly on some of your papers are you are not reducing your fractions. Uh, obviously this is a little frustrating because fractions are such a fundamental part of of high school mathematics. Um, at no time in math, I don't care if we're doing linear relationships or we're talking about um, cutting up a pie or you're doing calculus in grade 12, you always reduce fractions. You n would never leave 8 over 6. You would always reduce that to 4 over 3. Same thing with another example would be um, negative 4 over negative 5. This is not a reduced fraction because the negative and the negative need to cancel each other out. So cancelling those negatives is also part of reducing your fractions. Um, even something like this it is not a reduced fraction because that negative sign is not allowed to stay on the bottom. So you have to move that to the top. And make sure you're reducing fractions as soon as they occur. Never do math with unreduced fractions, especially in this unit when we're talking about slope. I have seen just far too many students do a question where they solve for the slope, so they use the slope formula and we're just pretending. They use the slope formula and they get something like this. And in their next step, they're substituting that into a formula like this, and they haven't reduced it. And this is really frustrating because the chances of a math mistake happening are much greater. And in certain situations, here's an example of a situation where you're really going to run into trouble, is if you have a slope that's something like this, and you haven't moved that negative sign to the top, and you try to continue to do math without reducing that fraction, it's a really, really messy, bad situation. So please make sure you reduce your fractions, right? Excellent. So what's my next complaint? Oh, my next complaint has to do with your unresolved plus minus signs. So let me give you just a, a, an old fashioned example and then we'll talk specific. This. At no time should you ever leave two signs side by side like this. You all know from grade 6 or 7 or 8 or whenever that that means 6 minus 5. These are plus and minus signs and they have to be resolved. Now here we could go on and say the answer is 1, but what we're really talking about oops, is in questions like this. So let me get rid of this example because that's not really something we see in this unit, but we definitely see this. And oh my goodness, the number of times that I've seen this, really, I should see this zero times. Look at this plus sign and this minus sign. You don't add a negative anymore. You resolve those signs. So if I'm adding a negative, we all know from grade six and seven, it means subtract. So the above answer is not finished until you've resolved that plus minus issue. So never leave plus a minus. We know that. It's just maybe you're not familiar with it in the setting of a line, but make sure you do that, please. Oh, the next one's kind of a big conversation. I'm still seeing students who are not balancing their equations. And there's so many different ways that I'm seeing this. Um, let's talk about kind of one of the first examples. So the first example of unbalanced equations is, well, let's go through some math and see where it occurs. 
So let's say that you calculated slope and you got it to be negative 2 over 3, and then you're told that this point is on your line. So most students are doing wonderful math. They know that therefore x is 4 and y is negative 1. So they're about to do a substitution. So here's my substitution. I'm really happy that most of students are using brackets in substitution. I think I said that enough. Um, so they do the substitution like this, everything's great. So negative 1 equals negative 8 over 3 plus b, isn't that wonderful? And then a lot of students say, well, I don't like to have fractions, so I'm going to get rid of my fractions, and we know the way to get rid of fractions is to multiply by 3. So watch what happens and see if you can spot the mistake. I'm going to multiply everything by 3. So multiply by 3, excellent. Multiply by 3. Um, gee, what did I forget? I forgot to multiply by 3. That's what I mean by balance and equation. When you do something to the left, like multiply by 3, you have to do it to the right. And not just part of the right. The entire right side of this equation has to be multiplied by 3. And I saw on a number of test papers, on a number of quizzes, where students did this, multiply by 3, and for some reason decided that the b was not important. Well, guess what? It's really important that you balance your equations and you should have this. That's why when you've seen me do this math in class, I have stopped here and I have said, okay, let's make sure, did I multiply by 3? Did I multiply by 3? Did I multiply by 3? And as you can see, I did it for each term, one, two, three, left side and right side. So please make sure that is a huge mistake because the other mistakes like not reducing your fraction, not dealing with your plus minus signs is kind of small things. You can still get the right answer. It's just written wrong. This will get you the wrong answer every time. Don't do it. Um, so we can still talk about balancing equations because my next step here is that I'm going to get rid of minus 8. And the way to get rid of minus 8 is to add 8. And again, this is not a huge deal. Most students are doing this just fine. But I'm still seeing a few students who forget. To get rid of minus 8, we're going to do plus 8 here and plus 8 here. And that's why our next step looks like this negative 3 plus 8 equals 3b. Balance the equations. If I add 8 here, I add 8 here. So I'm just going to keep going, divide by 3, divide by 3. Most of this stuff is fine, really. It was that step that I showed you right here. When you're getting rid of fractions, by multiplication, perfectly allowed, but you forget to multiply everything. That is a huge problem, and you have to fix it. Um, I'm going to show another example of it here. Let's say that I wanted to write this in standard form. So to write this equation in standard form, we know that standard form is not allowed to have fractions. So I usually suggest to my students that we're going to start by getting rid of divide by 2. And to get rid of divide by 2, we do the opposite, which is multiply by 2. So 2 times y. Here, multiplying by 2 eliminates the bottom. And again, I've seen so many students pretend that you don't have to multiply everything. You do. Everything gets multiplied by 2. It's called balancing your equation. So make sure you get plus 8 here. Because times 2 times 2 times 2, everything. So let's keep going and review how to put it into standard form. Um, I know many of you are going to do something shorter than I am about to do, but let me tell you the way that I always do it in class. We want to have these guys on the left side of the equation, and we have to put them into the proper order. So to get 5x to the other side of the equation, and again, I'm going to show the in-between step, you have to subtract 5x. And if I subtract 5x on the right, I have to subtract 5x over here. Plus 8, to get rid of plus 8, I have to subtract 8. So I have to subtract 8. And that's why our next step looks like this.
So let's get rid of the red for a second because most students aren't writing the red anymore and that's fine. That's kind of the intention that eventually you don't need to write all the little steps. But let's make sure you understand what we just did. In standard form, here's standard form, all of the terms are on the left and zero or nothing is on the right. So this 5x and this positive 8 were on the wrong side. I had to move them to the right side, or I guess I should say the correct side. 5x would become negative 5x. The 2y didn't move, so it's still positive 2y plus 8 had to move, it became negative 8. Now, in standard form, this first number, whatever it is, cannot be negative. And in this case, unfortunately, it's negative, so I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 and everything. So don't forget, multiplying everything is going to change every sign. And there you go, that's standard form. Okay? Balance the equation. Oh. And the last one I wanted to mention, learn about horizontal and vertical lines. I mean, I know that not every person watching this is one of my students, but if you're one of my students, how many times did I say, know about vertical and horizontal lines? They're the easiest lines ever if you bother to learn. And if you don't bother to learn, well, that's exactly what happened to some of you on the test zero marks. I don't know. They're weird. Yes, they're weird, but they're easy if you get them. So you could certainly just memorize this, that a horizontal line takes the form y equals and it has slope zero. You could memorize that a vertical line takes the form x equals and the slope is undefined. That's fine. It's kind of boring, but sometimes you just have to memorize. Um, of course, you know that I preferred this idea that, let me draw a little quick axes, that a horizontal line does not have an x ax, an x intercept. So a horizontal line has no x intercept and therefore the equation has no x in it. And if there's no x in the equation, then the equation must be y only. What must the y value be? Well, it's whatever this y value is because that's the same as this y value, and this y value, and this y value. So for example, these might be points negative 3, comma 4, 0, comma 4, maybe this is 6, comma 4. All of these have a y value of 4, so this equation would be y equals 4. So again, a horizontal line has no x-intercept, so the equation has no x. A vertical line Oops, close enough. A vertical line, let's get my vertical line. A vertical line has no y-intercept. Therefore, the equation has no y in it, which means that its equation must be of the form x equals. Um, its slope is undefined because I don't understand how an object can be both here and here at a particular moment in time. Um, for this line, for example, is at this x value and this x value. So maybe this is 5 comma 4, and this is 5 comma 0, and this is 5 comma negative 3. So that would be the equation x equals 5. So make sure you understand horizontal and vertical lines. They're really supposed to be incredibly easy, free marks, but some of you are not believing me when I say that. Okay, so that was just a little bit about silly mistakes. Please stop making them so that we can go from uh-oh to hooray. All right, that's